Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Kingdom 2 Crowns is a minimalistic side-scrolling micro-strategy game where you manage your kingdom in a simplistic but very interesting way. This game came out in 2018 and it has very positive reviews on Steam with 90% of all reviews being positive and 94% positive recent reviews. A few weeks ago, Kingdom 2 Crowns received a major content patch called Conquest Update, as well as a new DLC called Norse Lands. The developer of this game wanted me to check out the new DLC and make a video about it. This is a sponsored video where I'm going to go over some game's features and check out the new DLC. So let's not waste any more time. The gameplay in Kingdom 2 Crowns has a very simple premise. Your goal is to collect and invest coins in various parts of your kingdom. You can play in single player modes, but the game also has a split screen co-op feature. The game starts off really simple, but it quickly gets a lot more complicated. Never to the point where you feel confused, but you'll get a lot more things to worry about and manage properly. You start off with a simple camp and a couple of people that you have to recruit by tossing them some coins. And that's basically the main mechanic of the game. You will use this single button for a lot of different things in the game. Recruiting more people is really important because one of your main goals is to expand your kingdom. Each person that you recruit will start earning you some coins, depending on their profession. For example, hunters will go around and hunt animals, workers can chop down trees and build various structures, warriors will defend your kingdom and so on. Each successful activity will earn you coins, basically. All of this is done automatically, but you need to worry about a couple of things. Well, worry is a poor choice of words, because this is probably the most relaxing game that I've played recently. It feels really satisfying when everything is clicking together. But don't think for a second that this game lacks the challenge. During the night, the greed will start attacking you, trying to steal your coins, and ultimately, your crown. You need to prevent this from happening by building defense towers, stronger gates, and you need to properly arm your people so they can defend your kingdom. These attacks start off really simple, but as the days go by, the greed comes in greater numbers. And yeah, these little fuckers are called greeds. Anyway, expanding your kingdom is one of your main goals in the game. This is done by exploring the map on both sides, left and right obviously. These maps should be randomly generated, as far as I'm aware, but they all have similar elements that you're going to use. Exploring the map and expanding your kingdom by clearing the path is necessary for progression, but the grid will constantly try to destroy your gates and buildings. Since these attacks can happen on different sides, or sometimes even on both sides at the same time, you will need to be quite active and try to prevent this. Not by attacking or anything like that, because you don't have any attack skills. But you will have a couple of ways to slow them down because you can send your troops in front of the gate and try to arm them properly before the attack starts. Your people are smart enough to try and go back to the base when the greed comes, but they can't actually die from these attacks. Instead, when they take enough damage, they will turn homeless and unemployed. Because that makes sense. But you will be able to recruit them again by tossing them some coins. Speaking of coins, you should know that this jar is really important. As you might have noticed, the UI in this game is really minimalistic, you only get the most important information on the screen. As you start to shamelessly tax your people, after about every 2 minutes, your jar will eventually fill up. And you can actually start losing coins if this happens, so it's smart to start investing them as soon as possible. While the coins are the main currency of the game, you can find gems as well, which can be used to unlock some special features on the map, which I won't spoil. But I have to mention that I absolutely love finding different mounts, because the first one you get is pretty shitty, to be honest. Faster mounts make your life a lot easier, because it becomes a lot more enjoyable, not to mention faster, to cover both sides of your kingdom. Build, explore, defend, conquer, that's the main motto of the game. We mentioned all of those features, except the conquer part, which is where it gets really interesting. Your ultimate goal is to explore as many islands as you can. While exploring the first map, you will eventually find a boat, which requires a lot of coin to repair. But when you manage to get it back to your base, you can take some people with you and continue to another island. 
your boat can crash when this happens and you will need to expand your kingdom on this new map that you discovered by starting to build things again. But you'll need to be careful because as soon as you do this, the difficulty spike becomes quite noticeable and the kingdom you left behind will slowly start to go down without you. In fact, it's going to be a mess when you come back. So yeah, you will need to think a bit more strategically when it comes to discovering new maps. I learned this the hard way, unfortunately. But the beauty of this game is definitely in its simplicity and the fact that it manages to stay challenging despite how simple the mechanics are. It's one of those games that you can play when you have a little bit of free time, but you can also easily invest 10 hours in one sitting. I've spent about 5 hours when I first installed it on my PC. I've got it for free of course because it's a sponsored video, but shortly after I finished my PC play session, I went and bought it on my Switch. I think it's a perfect game to play on a portable device, but needless to say that it looks the best on the PC so I would definitely recommend buying the game on Steam. You can also get it on Android and iOS devices as well, so you have a lot of choice when it comes to different platforms. If you've watched my videos before, you probably know that I hate hand-holding in games. Well, this game doesn't tell you anything, except a few things in the beginning. You have to figure out everything else by yourself, but it's not a frustrating process. So now that you have a pretty good idea of how everything works, let's talk about Norse Lands, the major DLC update. Everything that we talked about so far applies to the DLC as well. However, Vikings are a major theme of this DLC. Your character, the people, the maps and pretty much your whole kingdom looks completely different to better fit the Viking team. It's a brand new campaign that expands the world of Kingdom 2 Crowns by adding new features like new units, mounts and a lot more. I'm a huge fan of the Viking culture so I like this DLC by default. This would be a perfect time to talk about the game's aesthetics. Like I said, this DLC completely changes the game, especially when it comes to visuals. It's obviously a pixel art game, but that doesn't seem to put any limits when it comes to artistic style which this DLC aims for. Two Crowns has a weather system that can change the mood of the game quite substantially, as well as the day and night cycle. One of my favorite things when it comes to the visuals is the river and its reflection, and different backgrounds depending on the map. The river adds a really nice reflection effect and combined with a vibrant color palette the game looks really cozy. Speaking of the color palette, I think the DLC has more vibrant colors compared to the vanilla game. Norse Lands also introduces many other changes and upgrades from puzzles to arboreal design. It's really satisfying when you successfully manage your kingdom and you're able to expand to the very end of the map. I won't spoil what happens after that, but it gives you a nice incentive to continue expanding the kingdom. It's easier said than done though because the greed can be relentless, especially during some special events in the game when they start spawning in greater numbers. You can get a bit paranoid because you can expect attacks from both sides, and the bigger the kingdom, the harder it gets to properly manage everything at the right time. But that's the part of the challenge in the game and I think it's done really well. Like I said before, you should try to get a better mount as soon as possible because it makes the game a lot more enjoyable. So just go out there and start exploring and solving puzzles. I've mentioned in the beginning that the game has a split screen co-op feature. And even though I didn't have the chance to try it out in co-op, I can see how much fun it can be in these game modes. It's because you can cover two different sides of the map at the same time so one of you can go out and explore while the other can manage the base and so on. And it's a perfect fit for the split screen because it's a side scroller so by default it just works. Norse Lands is a new paid DLC but if you decide to get the game you can also play previously released DLCs for free. So there is a substantial amount of content in this game altogether. The campaign can take you around 20 hours to complete but the game has a really strong replay value. It's really addictive so if you get hooked on you'll get your money's worth for sure. Like I said before, it's a relaxing experience combined with a decent dose of challenge. Norse Lands DLC is a great opportunity to start playing the game for the first time or as a returning player. If you like what you hear and you decide to buy the game on Steam, make sure to use the link that they provided in the description. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG contents. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.